and welcome to another action-filled edition of Badminton Unlimited. Coming up on the show, we look at who's taken the lead in the race to Guangzhou rankings after three back-to-back -back events on the HSBC BWF World Tour. And we spend the day with India's number one men's singles player, Kadambi Srikant, in his hometown of Hyderabad. I won that match, but still he was very angry. He told me that you know you should never celebrate in such a way because you know the, your celebrations make your opponent feel as a big player. Plus, a special treat for fans in Singapore as rugby legend Brian O'Driscoll gets a badminton lesson. With the conclusion of three successive tournaments in Asia last week, the race to Guangzhou rankings have seen a lot of movement across all five disciplines. In men's singles, Singapore Bamberton Open 2019 runner-up Anthony Sinasuka Ginting was the week's biggest mover, climbing seven places to eighth. Yonex Sunrise India Open 2019 runner-up Kadabi Srikant and Selkom Axiata Malaysia Open finalist Chen Long, they move up a spot into third and fourth respectively. Victor Axelson continues to lead the pack. Similarly, there's no change atop women's singles with Ratchanok Intanon still at the summit. After victories in Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, Tai Tzu Ying jumps three places into fourth, with her opponents in those finals also rising in the rankings. Malaysia Open runner-up Akane Yamaguchi and Singapore Open finalist Nozomi Okuhara climbing two places each into second and third respectively. Men's doubles sees new leaders in Singapore Open champions Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda, who advance one place to take top spot. Their opponents in the final, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, have also climbed one place into second. With a quarter-final finish in Kuala Lumpur and a semi-final exit in Singapore, world number ones Marcus Fenaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamuljo also move up the table by two places into sixth. World champions Mayu Matsumoto and Wakana Nagahara boast the top spot in women's doubles after winning their first tour title of the year in Singapore. The Japanese duo displace India Open champions Gracia Poli and Apriyani Rahayu at the pinnacle. World number ones Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota move into third following their semi-final exit of the Singapore Open, while young Chinese pair Li Wenmei and Zheng Yu climb up three places to break into the top eight after their quarter-final finish in the Lion City. The mixed doubles ranking sees Thailand's Dechapol Puavara Nukro and Sapsuri Tira Tanachai sitting pretty at the summit after winning the Singapore Open crown. World champions Zhang Siwei and Huang Yachong are up two places into second after clinching the Malaysia Open crown, while Indonesian pairs Hafiz Faisal, Gloria Emmanuel Wijaja, and Rinov Rinaldi, Pita Haningtias Mentari move up three places each into fifth and eighth, respectively, following quarterfinal finishes in Kuala Lumpur. The Special Olympics World Games Abu Dhabi 2019 was more than a sporting competition. It empowered people of determination with intellectual disabilities and promoted the need to create a more inclusive society. For everyone connected with badminton at the ADNEC arena, the sport played an excellent role supporting the cause. Badminton is such a special sport because it's really fun to watch especially when you are supporting your own, you know, team or from your country or you want to just support the players, you know, the people that are playing badminton, especially in the Special Olympics. You're rooting for everybody. It is an easy sport to be a part of. And I get to learn, I get to learn sports because I'm, because I don't play a lot of sports, so I like playing a lot, a lot. And I get to learn to be a part of an amazing opportunity for Special Olympics. Badminton at the Games was not just a platform for players to strut their stuff, it also gave 12 participants from the Cedra Foundation the opportunity to fulfill their line judging duties as part of the Special Olympics officials program for athletes. Badminton was definitely one of our favorite sports from the beginning because looking at the structured 
manuals that were already um, available and looking at the tremendous support that we received from the badminton community here in the UAE, it was clear we need strong partners to realize this program. Watching those 12 participants growing and developing independence, their social network, their leadership experience, their communicational skills, it is really tremendous, and I don't use this word uh, lightly, but it was really a life-changing experience. Understanding the rules and regulations was no easy task, but with continuous encouragement from administrators of the sport and the participants' own determination to succeed, it was only a matter of time before badminton's latest recruits showcased their newfound skills. They were all excited to be part of it, so... They started with the concept of it, but as we progressed from having uh, theoretical classes to uh, practical classes, they developed the concept of the badminton and understood what it's about, and they understood the rules of it. So we have them today being part of this event. And with the recent signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the BWF and Special Olympics International, there is no doubt that the new opportunities will continue to arise for these people of determination. It has to be open-minded culture now. Now that it's, it, the Special Olympic happened in Abu Dhabi, I would love to see a more open-minded approach to hiring people with disabilities. And that's my hope for the future. I've been coming here for the last nine years. Six to eight hours of training every day. I've gone through injuries, good times, bad times. From teenage dream to becoming world number one. Nobody can take that away from me. I'm Kidambi Srikanth. You're watching Badminton Unlimited. I think it has been a, a great year for me. I think uh, the most memorable thing for me would be you know, my first uh, individual medal at the Commonwealth Games and then uh, you know, Team India won f their first ever uh, team gold. And I became world number one during that uh, <laughs> tournament and I'm really happy that you know, I was able to achieve it. You know, I think I'm very happy to be associated with Lini. I was with them. Uh, you know, I won my first ever Super Series when I was with Lini. And then I knew he had the potential to be one of the top players in the world and uh, could be consistently a top player in the world. You know, for me, three people I look up to as, as uh, Gopi Sir, Nas Dhoni, Roger Federer. So Gopi Sir, because his uh, it was worked as hard as I worked for myself for me. So it was it was in uh, 2001 when he just won uh, the All England and when he came to Guntur, I met him there. You know. And again, I saw him uh, in 2009 when I first uh, came here with my parents to ask him for the admission. Well, it was um, his brother who had come to join initially and then his parents had uh, come up with the idea that uh, can we also have Srikanth come over. I said, okay, bring him over, then I'll have a look. So when I joined here, I asked him, I, 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 I told him uh, I want to be a doubles player. Then 2010 is when uh, I, know I slowly started to play singles. That's because he wanted me to play even singles along with doubles and mixed doubles. And uh, I know 2011, Youth Commonwealth, I didn't get the entry for singles, but I, know I played doubles and mixed doubles medals in both the events. So for me, I think it was important at that point to kind of say, okay, he needs to focus on something. Uh, with the kind of strokes he had, uh, I said uh, there's a good chance that he could do well in singles. And um, somewhere around 2011-12 is when, when I said, okay, let him start focusing on one. Uh, but he responded well, I think, and uh, that's something which uh, I'm happy about. When I was playing against Victor in the quarterfinal of Denmark, so I lost the first set. And then I won a very close second set. And then I was celebrating. And then he was very angry 
you know even after that match i won that match but still he was very angry he told me that you know you should never celebrate in such a way because you know the your celebrations make your opponent feel as a big player being able to focus a lot being able to concentrate a lot on that uh, you know present situation during that match i think that really helped me a lot well he's he's easy going his uh, he gets along with people is uh, even with his competitors he, he just doesn't uh, get his uh, on court rivalries off court he is clearly demarcated very easy going unless you know him deeply you won't know that he's really has uh, deep intentions or deep discipline inside you just from a normal perspective would be very calm and the group but a bit of a prankster as well a long back uh in 2014 when i was uh, traveling with gopi so for a tournament and we were in an electronic store and then he because he wanted to buy something store guy he wanted to take a picture with gopi sir so he was there and then gopi sir told him that uh, you know you should take a picture with him because you know he'll become a star someday and he told him that and then he clicked a picture for me with him that store guy so i think that was something which is very memorable to me well i don't really uh, follow so much of news if i don't really google myself but the best comment uh, was when uh, one of the reporter told me that lindan has commented uh, on me saying i'm the most uh, complete player in the recent time and uh, i was very happy to hear that from such a big player and i've never thought that i've become big or i've uh, achieved anything it's still that you know i still dreaming of achieving things you know achieving medals you know winning medals it's it's the world championships medal asian games medal and you know winning olympics and stuff so i still think of myself as a young kid you know working hard to you know achieve his dreams Time for a quick break here on Badminton Unlimited, but stay with us as we continue chatting with Kidambi Srikant and meet his brother as well. Plus, find out which player has got the best shuttle stacking skills. So on an off day, uh, I roughly wake up at 11. and I probably have lunch and you know if my brother plans for something we do that but if there's nothing then i sleep again <laughs> wake up in the evening dinner sleep again welcome to my home i stay here with my parents my brother and my dog max my brother started playing first and uh, it was because the stadium was just 5 minutes from our home and then i used to go there with him in the evenings after my school you know i used to have some fun there and it, it it was kind of a time pass thing for me and then also because there were different other sports in that stadium i joined academy in 2009 december so i moved uh, to this house in 2017 other than badminton i try and play some other sports maybe tennis or cricket sometimes cricket most of the times will be with the academy people tennis sometimes here maybe with my brother when he was world number 200 or something odd but still when he becomes world number 1 i think inside the house the things are the same so the way we treat him or the friends uh, in our circle is the same so we never change our behaviors or maybe he never changes ideas or maybe behavior so it's the same what made you to take a decision to uninstall the whatsapp to get some free time for myself to get that little more sleep i need i wanted and yeah, it was an easy decision for me to make people uh, didn't believe i did that but but again you know they came to know after you know their messages were not being delivered It even was... even today i got a message from chandra the leaning guy from the singapore uh requesting me to ask you to install the whatsapp again <laughs> i'm definitely not doing it i'm happy without whatsapp you know nobody is bothering me yeah and you know i can call and talk to people who i want to talk and it'll only take about one or two minutes for me i'm very happy you are so we are uh, more like friends rather than brothers you know my mother wants it to be the other way so it's it's more of a friendly relation rather than a brother relation until my juniors we used to play singles and i used to play doubles 
and right after my juniors i've uh, shifted to singles and then he shifted to doubles but now he comes and sets for my match every time i'm playing so yeah he's a good coach that way because he he exactly knows how i play because he's been uh, seeing me from like, from my day one so i don't get to see him every day because you know some days i don't even see him because i leave home at 6 in the morning and then i come back only at 8 or 8:30 and sometimes he sleeps by 8:39 HSBC has been involved in sports partnerships for over 20 years. They're a leading partner in golf, rugby sevens, tennis, cycling and badminton. The reason we partner with sports is because we believe it drives social inclusion, delivers role models, helps people become part of a team, which are all really important skills for building future role models and helping to drive inclusiveness, which is a very important part of the bank. And the sports we choose are representative of our customers. And we have 39 million of them, and they want to see more of them in us. So we're very clear about why we do sport, and the sports we choose are all about our customers, our colleagues, and our communities that we serve. And none more so than the badminton this weekend, which is a hugely popular sport across particularly Asia, which allows us to connect with our customers in a way that perhaps other sports don't in the region. In the second week of April, fans in Singapore were treated to two major HSBC-sponsored sporting events. The HSBC World Rugby 7 Series and the Singapore Open 2019 Badminton Championships. Creating the perfect crossover opportunity to celebrate both sports' success within the region. The most important thing is that we are bringing together two sports that represent perhaps different backgrounds, but fundamentally have the same skills. It's about getting people outdoors or indoors, being active, helping people understand the importance of teamwork and working together. Yeah, it's been, been very good, very good fun. I was exhausted just watching them. Rugby legend and HSBC ambassador Brian O'Driscoll tried his hand at Babington at the indoor stadium, taking on Singapore's Lo Kian Yu, who earlier this year stunned Chinese superstar Lin Dan in Thailand, together with former Singapore national and Commonwealth silver medalist Derek Wong. The sports stars also shared the court with young players and fans in a fun and sometimes competitive game of badminton. Surely this expression says it all, the sweat absolutely dripping off me and I can't even blame the humidity, you know, we're indoors here in the, in the National Arena and it was some workout, wow, what great fun too. I haven't played uh, badminton for 30 odd years and um, some of those shots told that I didn't play for a long time but it was it was great to get a lesson from from um, you and, and Derek Webb. You know, it just shows their athleticism and um, you know, what a high standard you know, the professional game is. I think it was quite fun like to see a rugby player with such muscular muscles to play, like holding a small racket or a middle racket like that. So yeah, it's quite interesting. I know that he's an athlete, and as athletes, right, we all have a bit of that uh, ability to actually play different different sports. So nothing really surprised me. Just, uh, maybe he was a bit stiff uh, on, on some of the uh, certain shots. Uh, so that's what we tried to change in him, try to uh, get him to relax his hand a bit before he secured the shot. Well, I always love when you do when you do cross sports um, you know, activities like today when rugby meets badminton. And you can see from you know, the kids out here, I was getting some lessons from them as well. And you know, the fact that HSBC are, are sponsors of both badminton and, and uh, rugby sevens here in, in Singapore is. It, it's brilliant that it's it's covering all demographics. You know, you can play badminton at any age. You know, uh, rugby sevens is probably a little bit more niche, but um, but great for the spectator as well. In very good initiative, yeah, for the sponsors to to come in, uh, show their presence. You know, and even now we have some kids, you know, from the local uh, local schools that are coming down as well to to interact with world class players, not just from badminton but also from from rugby as well. So it's really a good experience and I hope uh, more of these events can happen, yeah, especially during uh, big competitions like the Singapore Open and the HSBC Singapore Sevens. Yeah. So that'll be, be good. After the action on court, all three men spent some time interacting with their young fans, signing autographs and taking selfies. For these fans, it was an experience of a lifetime to see their heroes from very different sports come together under one roof. I enjoyed the fact that we got to 
see professional players play and not only that, actually get to interact and play with them as well. It was fun and I had yeah, I had lots of fun playing with other people that I don't know. Playing the doubles with them, partnering partnering some of them and seeing the way they play and also trying to like play better myself. I'm here with Hendra Setiawan, our first challenger for the shuttle stacking competition. So he's going to have 20 seconds to stack the shuttles as high as he can. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, go. Asta! Nefos. Five seconds. One more, get one more. Three, two, one. No hands. Ooh. Zero. <laughs> Disqualified. <It's> <laughs> Alright, here's our second challenger, Kevin Sanjaya. You ready? Okay, ready. Ready, set, go. That's not straight. Straight in, <laughs> you can straight in. Five. Like this step. Yeah, oh. but then you have to let go. Two, one, let go. <laughs> no. You mad? Get up. So difficult. Our third challenger, Mohamed Hassan. You ready? Yes. Okay, set, go. Oh, also very calm. Oh, don't let it fall. Three, two, one. Yeah, okay. See? Better? Yeah, you're the first one to make it to the end. <laughs> okay, do you want to count them? Six, nine, 11, 12. 12. One slot. Yeah, that's the number to beat, 12. Number one? Yeah, number one. <laughs> Our fourth challenger, Marcus Gideon. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Yeah. He's eager. Ready, <laughs> set, go. One, two, three, nine. <laughs> two more shuttles and you beat um, Hendra. Ah, uh, Mohammed. <laughs> okay, stop. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, new champ. Good yeah. job. <laughs> and our next challenger, who are you? Ready to go. Alright, ready, set, go. Oh, one hand. <laughs> oh, he doesn't even need two hands. Oh, so steady. Five, four, three, two. Oh, yay! <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> Our next challenger here, PV Sindhu. The number to beat is 13 by Marcus Gideon still. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right, ready, set, go. Oh, two at a time. New tactic. Don't let it fall. Five seconds. Oh, it's tipping. <laughs> Time's up, <laughs> but it's a disqualification. <laughs> Hopefully your tournament is better than this. <laughs> Hopefully yes. <laughs> so we've teamed them up to see if this power couple can beat Marcus's um, record of 13 shuttles in the stacking competition. So 20 seconds, are you ready? Yeah. Set, go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, look at them go. But when you let go, is it going to stay? Oh, that. you got 10 seconds. Come on, stabilize it. Oh, this is the way to do it. Look at that. Don't let it fall. Three seconds. You can stop how it stop how it is going. It's time up. No. Oh, they got greedy with one more shuttle. No fighting. All right, next challenger is Lu Kai from China. Set, go. Oh, he's quick. Oh, it's getting bendy. Five seconds. Make sure it's stable. Three. Two, one, let go. Ah. Is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> game over. Uh, yeah. Disqualified. Our next competitor is Huang Ya Chong. Are you ready? Set, go. Oh, different tactic. Stacking them, then standing them. Squashing them together. Five, four, Three, two, one, time. Oh, it's stable. You want to count them? She's uh, done. <laughs> yeah. She's done. Same as Marcus. Draw. All right, the next challenger here is Jong Siwei. 
and he's going to try beat his mixed doubles partner score of 13. Ready, set, go. Five. Oh, so stable. Don't let it fall. Oh, so good. 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six. Maybe just stop there. Don't let it fall. Three, two, one. Let go. Oh, so high. Okay, now count. Seventeen. Wow. Good job. Malaysia Open champion and shuttle stacking champion. Too strong. Well, that's it for this episode. Join us next week as we look ahead to the Barford and Thompson New Zealand Open 2019. Plus, we speak exclusively to Korean legend Lee Yong-dae. In the meantime, do remember to log on to the BWF's fan site, bwfbadminton.com, for all the latest news and features on the sport. Bye-bye for now.